In the last episode, the LA Kings somehow made the postseason. We got absolutely spanked by Edmonton, rightfully so, but we still made the postseason, which, you know, you could argue was really not for the best, all things considered. But at the end of the day, it shows promising signs that the younger core that we already have, they might be capable of doing some special things in the, you know, in the somewhat near future, the distant future, at the very least. We do, of course, have some things that we still need to work out. We know that Jaden Schwartz isn't long for this team. Uh, We do have, you know, a draft to go through. We have a lot of money to spend in free agency. We already have prospects that we need to sign. So it is going to be another very important offseason for us, a very busy offseason for us. And I'm excited to see what happens. Now, we did leave the last episode with the question of what do we do with Jaden Schwartz. But again, I think he pretty much has to be dealt. Again, there was that debate over whether or not I should be allowed to trade his rights. You know, because at the end of the day, he could still say, I wouldn't want to resign there anyway. You know, we'll see what happens with that. And then with Robin Leonard, I mean, he's just been, he's just been brutal. Now, look. There are a lot of goalies who have had bad stats because of the scoring that we've had, and I'm probably going to drop it down to medium, but at the end of the day, actually, I might have already dropped it down to medium. Yeah, I dropped it down to medium at the start of the last episode. So the postseason and everything, he's not he's not forgiven for that. Now, penalties are still at four out of four to try and boost up the amount of offense, but at the end of the day, Robin Leonard still had a really bad series. That's the only way to put it. So it's, it's kind of frustrating in that, in that way. But you know what? It is what it is. We'll explore all of our options. Leonard's still under contract, heading into next year. We'll see how it goes down. But all in all, still a very good year for the Kings when we really uh, certainly did not expect to have as good of a season as we did. Although, again, you could argue it wasn't a good season for us because having a lottery pick was really the goal. The Tampa Bay Lightning have won the Stanley Cup. I think it was $71 million there for the capped floor. But quickly, let's take a look at the final bit of information as Tampa beats Colorado in six. So ultimately, Edmonton made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals before losing to the Avs, who then went on to lose to Tampa. Let's take a look at the Lightning setup here just to see... Oh, what they good. God almighty. (laughs) So yeah, clearly with the penalties of 4 out of 4 and everything, it boosted up a little bit. But yeah, you would kind of expect the Lightning to be good. Nikolai Perhorkin wins, I think, a second Stanley Cup (laughs) since I've gotten rid of him. It's pretty ridiculous. Eric Chernock there, goaltender. So yeah, see, Andre Vasilevsky had no issues putting up a half-decent save percentage. Now there is, of course, going to be a difference in the overalls between the two. Uh, but you get the point. Robin Leonard, you could say it's because of the team in front of him. You might not be wrong, but Leonard just did not have a good postseason run. We were hoping he'd be the type of goalie that could kind of steal us a series. He wasn't. At least he wasn't in this postseason. Miko Rantanen wins the Art Ross as well as the Hart. John Carlson wins his third straight Norris to begin this series. The Calder did, in fact, go to Evan Barrett. Braden Point wins the Gon Smythe. The Vesna to Ilya Samsonov. Master to Thomas Shabbat, the Selkie to Philip Deneau in St. Louis, Miko Renton wins to Ted Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard to Patrick Kane. Down in the AHL, Rasmus Kapari scored the most points. That's promising. Evan Barrett did that last year and then went on to win the Calder this year. I expect Kapari to make the NHL lineup, so that could be a sign of things to come. He was also the league MVP, but that's Brandon Duhame scored the most goals. Tied to Landria was the top rookie. Rasmus Sandin. For Ottawa, by the way, what the Belleville sends was the top defenseman. Matt Villalta was the top goaltender. Ontario, decent season. MVP of the playoffs, I don't remember if it's Derek, but uh, Barabo there for the Iowa Wild was the MVP of the Calder Cup playoffs. So that, again, brings that season to a close as we get ready to move forward here, I can't set up the trade block just yet, which is okay. So first and foremost, lottery results where we have 
the 11th overall pick, thanks to the Vegas Golden Knights and the Adrian Kempe trade. So we didn't, you know, hit the, you know, we didn't hit the jackpot with either of the picks that we acquired for Kempe. But no denying, you know, we're going to be picking up good players regardless. So I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. The 11th overall pick that gives us some maneuverability in this draft, and presumably. We're going to be looking at these players here that are available. So Charlie Letty will probably avoid, but Bryson Platt, Timofey Vasilyev, Rod Vandeveld, Mohamed Marsh, Mo Marsh, Stefan Eklund, and Alan Douglas likely to be the players. And then, of course, our next pick is right there with Thomas Altonen, Douglas, Tom Halischuk, Bryson DeBoer, quite a few Americans in the first round this time out. So we'll get a look at the retired players who's calling it a day. Ilya Kovalchuk. Ilya Kovalchuk went back to Montreal and ended up retiring as a hab. Unfortunately, 21 points shy of 1,000 in his career. Alex Steen also calls it a day for defenseman Alex Edler, Jay Bomeister. And for goaltenders... Ryan Miller, Craig Anderson, Ayaro Halak, amongst others. As nobody becomes a staff member. And that'll lead us straight to the interviews, which again, we're not going to do. And that gets me to the trade block. So again, because we did fail a goal, I do have to... I do have to give up either a third round pick for nothing or a C-level prospect. We'll probably give up a third round pick for nothing. I am going to completely open the trade block just to see what offers we get and see what makes sense. It's kind of my game plan here. Now in terms of how this will affect, you know, my trade up and trade down, I don't know because hypothetically if it's a player if it's a certain type of trade, then hypothetically it wouldn't be you know, it wouldn't be me trading down if picks are involved, you know, if it's a uh, a you know, pick for, player for pick kind of situation instead of just pick for pick. Does that count as a trade down? There's there's some ways we could maneuver around some of the rules that we've set up in this series. I don't know. We'll see what happens and see what people think uh, happens to be cheap or not. But regardless, it is draft day. Let's do this. So first and foremost, we do go to the trade finder. We're going to double check our draft pick situation. Again, we're only allowed seven picks as we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven within the first few rounds. I have to trade a second round pick as well. Have to. Which is unfortunate. And uh, I have to get rid of a third round pick basically immediately. So let me do that. This is the punishment. For not completing all of our goals this past season, I am going to get rid of that Nashville pick along with a seventh. And we're going to send that to. I mean, Anaheim was brutal, but I don't necessarily want to help them out. Buffalo's listed as a rebuilder. Who else is listed as a rebuilder? Montreal. Perfect. Screw it. Nothing pains me more than helping out Montreal. So there we go. We will essentially just be giving them a third round pick for free, and we swap sevenths. So there we go. The punishment is complete. That obviously does not count as a trade down. Uh, that is just me holding up my end of the bargain for not completing all of our goals, as I mentioned. So we still have to work out what uh, second round pick we're going to get rid of, but obviously that opens up room for our trade up, which can be nice. Gleboff is still looking good. I like Leonard, Volalta, of course. I don't really think there's anybody that I want to get rid of here, although I'm intrigued to see. I think, yeah, that, that no, that, that car outside is definitely picking up audio. That's great. What could we get for Robin Leonard? As Carolina is offering Pekka Rene, Jamison Reese, obviously we don't want Rene. I don't want Grabner. Leonard's worth more than a second and a third. I really don't want Austin Watson. Watson actually might not be a bad fit on the fourth line. But, man, if that's all we can get for Robin Leonard right now, it's worth keeping him. Bottom line. If Austin Watson, a third and a fourth, or a second, third, and Michael Grabner is the best I can do, 
I would probably prefer to just keep Robin Leonard because somebody has to be our goalie next year, even if it's Leonard and Vavalainen. Defensively, again, I don't really plan on getting rid of anybody. I'm a little bit worried about Zekoff's development. Anthony Honka's as well, although he just kind of made sense to get out of a trade at the time. I don't really think there's anybody to move outside of just seeing like, okay, what could I get for Jaden Schwartz's negotiating rights? Which I could get a fourth and a fifth in the rights to Tyler Bozak. I don't believe Arizona was up there. So I could get a third and a fourth. The problem is I didn't check the damn standings. I don't remember who the top teams were. <laughs> I don't think San Jose was up there either. Tampa was up there though, weren't they? I'm fairly certain Tampa was up there. Damn it. You know what? I'm going to double check this. I'm going to play it safe as it is. Uh, that Winnipeg pick is about to go through. There you go. Let me double check this. We don't want to frustrate the people. Let me double check the standings as Shane Wright is now a member of the Winnipeg Jets. But just quickly here, scrolling back through the last video. Okay, there we go. So, I at least have the teams. Now, there was a fair point. It would technically be the top six teams in the league, not the top seven, uh, because I have to factor in myself. So, taking a look here again with Jaden Schwartz. If Washington, Carolina, New Jersey, Dallas, Ottawa, or San Jose sent an offer, we're good. And I do believe, I mean, Dallas sent an offer for a third and a fourth, so we can trade Jaden Schwartz at the very least and still be within the rules. Florida wasn't up there. Mini wasn't up there. New Jersey wasn't. Ottawa was, though, but I don't... No, if they sent an offer, a third and a fourth and a prospect, an unsigned prospect. Philly doesn't factor in. San Jose, two fourths and Sweetland. Tampa actually wasn't up there despite winning the cup. Okay, so I think it's either Carolina or Ottawa. Actually, New Jersey sent an offer too, but that's a third and a fifth. So it's going to be either the third and fourth from Dallas actually not Carolina third and a fourth from Dallas or a third fourth and a prospect I'm gonna take this one I think from Ottawa just because it's like why not take the extra prospect so we're completely allowed to trade Jaden Schwartz here again I don't really see how we can keep him with the amount of prospects we have coming up uh, we're gonna take that that's not gonna factor in as like trading down that's just an outright trade for Jaden Schwartz's negotiating rights. So we're going to send him to Ottawa. Again, uh, that's a tough player to lose. We have no idea good how we have no idea how good Timo and Narena is. And obviously we're going to lose some morale to getting rid of Jaden Schwartz. Narena was a 6th round pick, so I highly doubt we're ever going to sign him. But again, it made sense to get rid of Schwartz. I mean Dylan Genther is coming up, you know. Uh, Kaliev is here. Again, Rasmus Kapari is probably stepping up. It just made all the sense in the world to get rid of him. Unfortunately, I don't really see anybody else I'd prefer to try and get rid of. Again, Velarde, Kapari. Wow, uh, as Hoyle goes. So now the thing here is to figure out what we want to do when it comes to what picks we want to make and if we want to potentially try to trade up. I think that's the decision to make right now. And again, I'm looking at some of these potentials and it's like, you know, Nick Wong's not really going to fetch us much, so that's just going to complicate things more with the draft picks. So, are there any teams that want to trade their picks? The Bruins do. The Bruins want to trade that third overall pick. That is the perfect time to try and trade up right now. Right now. So obviously we'll use the Vegas 11th. I need to get rid of a second round pick anyway. I'll use Carolinas. And from there I can just stack up. We'll start with lower picks and then take it from there. So will that go through? A first, a second, two sevenths, and a sixth to move up from 11th to 3rd. Does not go through, not surprising. Let's take out a 7th. 
So again, I'm allowed to use as many draft picks as I want, but I can only get two draft picks back. Um, you know, there was the option of uh, only using the trade finder for this situation. Let me know what you think. Should I be allowed to do what I'm attempting to do here? I mean, because with the Bruins wanting that, let's be honest, the game's probably going to just be like, hey, give us Turcotte. And obviously I'm not going to do that. So let me let me know what you're thinking if this is fair game. I might even run out of time here trying to get this deal done because I'm obviously trying to get this deal done for as low as possible. We'll use our third rounder as well. So a first, a second, a third, two-fourths for the third overall pick. Quite far off. Okay. Well, that means we're going with multiple seconds. We'll use Nashville's and Carolina's as well. Will that go through? Quite far off still. I am now currently afraid we're going to run out of time. So I'll use a third and a fourth as well. So it's a near King's Ransom for that third overall pick. They still rejected it. Quite close to fair value. We're going to have to use all three second round picks. One could make the argument now as to whether or not this is worth it. I think it probably will be to get a third overall pick. So let's do a first, three seconds, and a fifth for the third overall pick. There we go. Was that cool to do? Should I have been allowed to do that, or should I have had to try to use the trade finder to get that deal from Boston? Initially, we said with the trade finder that I can only acquire a player through trade finder. We didn't say draft pick. So there you go. Me kind of, you know, testing the waters a little bit on what you think I can do. But there we go. We do get that Bruins pick. That's going to count as my one trade up for this draft. I'm not, you know, I'm going to be allowed to trade down again, but no more trading up for picks. So we have the third, the 16th, 78th. Uh, this will be our fourth pick, of course. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. So I'm going to have to trade away those two seventh round picks. And that'll be our trade down. So let's do it. We have the third overall pick in this draft. Thanks to an abundance of draft picks. I had to get rid of a second anyway. So the question is, who do we go with? And I mean, Matthew Savoy's there. Ludwig Persson, Joachim Kamel, Brad Lambert, Uri Slavkovsky, Kari Nokalainen, who's computer generated, and a defenseman named Brady Slychuk. Now, Kamel and Lambert I'm going to rule out because I've already used them before. But I've never used Matthew Savoy. And that's interesting. Obviously, there's one defensive product here, and or prospect, and a forward. And then out of these picks later on, there is another defenseman in Bryson DeBoer. So pretty much the question is, do we think we need another forward or defenseman? I would probably argue defenseman, but Matt Savoy is definitely going to be the you know best player available from here. And if we add him to a front three alongside Turcotte and Genther, and then you have Kapari, Iafalo, Grunstrom, Anderson, Dolan, you know, having the forward prospects, we can eventually add more defensive prospects. So I think I just, I have to avoid taking the risk. I can assume that Sly Chuck's a medium elite just because it's like, okay, you know, he's a computer-generated guy who's being pushed down by real-world players. He had 52 points as a 6'5 defensive D-man. At least I can presume he's a defensive D-man because he's 6'5. Ooh, boy, that's tough. That's actually really tough. We're either taking Savoy or we're taking Slychuk. I feel like it has to be Savoy. I feel like it has to be. He's just too good to pass up. He is going to be too good to pass up. Let's do it. So we are taking a right wing with our first pick. We trade up with the Bruins. Matt Savoy, welcome to Los Angeles. Now we know he's good. That's fine. The 16th pick is our next pick. So some of the defensemen are off the board. Charlie Letty, Slychuk ended up going to Buffalo. Not really all that surprising. So let's see who we have available to us here. We have three defensemen, a center in Halischuk. So Mo Marsh is there, Stefan Eklund, Thomas Altonen, Tom Halischuk, Bryson DeBoer, Mitch Brust, and Pekka Lettinen. So obviously we could look for a left wing. We look for a center or one of the three defensemen. And Mohamed Marsh is 
probably a safe bet. I don't believe Stefan Eklund is real. And then Bryson DeBoer is also there. There's really no reason to not take Muhammad Marsh. I mean, 50 points, that's solid. The penalty minutes are good, too. Eklund didn't really put up any points. What about DeBoer? Yeah, there's no reason to not take Mo Marsh here. We need another defenseman. Let's do it. He's the pick. How good will he be? We do not know. But we add uh, two picks, the third and the 16th. Matt Savoy and Mo Marsh added to the team. Next pick is now 78th overall. We don't get a single trade offer for anybody, which is a little bit disappointing. So here now we have Matty Aninimaki, Silas Murley, and Miles LaCosta, Fabian Grossman, Julian Penner, Chad Tavares, and Aiden Yell. So again, we're not allowed to scroll down. We could take our second defenseman, our first center, or you know our, our center requirement or our left wing requirement. So let me take a look at the defenseman first. Ninimaki, two points. Eh, it's a big boy, definitely a defensive defenseman. Grossman, I mean, eight points, 42 penalty minutes. Again, bigger defenseman. Chad Tavares and Aiden Yell, a lot of big boy defensemen. The center and Penner, 23 points at 18. And the two left wingers, both 18. Miles LaCosta and a much bigger Silas Murley. I'm going to go for LaCosta. Smaller player. I feel like he has a better chance, you know, to be fast and a bit more speed-based. I'm going to go with Miles LaCosta, the American. Uh, playing for the Drummondville. I'm going to call them the Volts because I don't remember how to properly pronounce it. So now we need a center, a defenseman, a goalie. And we have our free pick. So 109 is next. That brings us to the middle of the fourth round. Let's see what we have. There is a goalie, Reed Veshi, who is obviously a safe pick. Ellison we don't know much about. We don't need Solmik. Boganecki, nine points. Eh. And then center, Guy Abulliet. Ooh, that point total, though. That point total, though, for Bruliettes. I like that a lot. It's either him or the goaltender. So the question is, when is my next pick? And it's coming up, apparently. And there is another goalie, and Lassie Twilminen. Okay. So just to double check, that pick is 23rd. We're going to take Bruliette here and then take that other Finnish goaltender that's available a little bit later. And I might regret this, but, I mean, again, 18, 59 points. Very happy with that. Guy Abrouillet is the pick. That is our center pick done. So now we need one defenseman, one goaltender, and I also have a free pick. As we just missed out on that Canadian goaltender. Uh, but that means we're definitely going with Twilminen. So Lassie Twilminen, welcome aboard. So now again, it's a defenseman and a free pick. And then we are out of this draft. I cannot make that fourth round pick, though. Can't do it. So our trade down is going to have to happen right here. Our trade down is going to have to happen right here. So we got to get rid of that fourth. And we'll get rid of that lower seventh. And we'll be good to go. So let's we can trade it to Anaheim. That's fine. And see if we can get a fourth and a sixth from them next year. What about just a fourth next year? Damn. How about a fifth next year? That would be great. Actually, yeah. Well, no, I'm allowed to get two draft picks. No, wait, yeah, no, it was one. So, yeah, it had to be the fifth anyway, otherwise I would have broken the rule. So, there we go. That is our trade down. We have, again, one more defenseman and a free pick to make. But I wasn't allowed to make and, and and am not allowed to make more than one, or uh, excuse me, two draft picks per round for one round. So defensemen, we're either going to be taking Ashton Willis, eh, Bergenheim, eh, or Gustavs Artukin. Unless there's a forward here that's a big winner, yes. We're going to take Wesley Jennings, and then our free, uh, the, he's our free pick, and then our last pick will be for a defenseman and it will be either Hunter or Trevecca. Ted Hunter, Harvey Trevecca. I'm just gonna go for Ted, smaller defenseman, 
more likely to be an offensive defenseman. And I feel like they develop a little bit better this year. So there we go. We are out of this draft. Uh, big time move. Trading up to get the third overall pick where we end up taking Matthew Savoy. And ultimately, I mean, with like Brouliette and Jennings, I feel like there are players that could eventually develop. Now, I know for some people, like it's not as satisfying at all to not have the immediate results of knowing how good they are. But again, we always have it set up that way. We're doing it a little bit differently this time out. So that brings us to the re-sign phase in terms of expiring deals. I mean, Gleboff needs to be signed to his ELC. It's pretty straightforward. For defensemen, I mean, obviously, we're going to look to bring back Mikey Anderson. I don't feel like losing him. So he is looking for a two-year deal. That's perfect for me because he'll still be an RFA at the end of it. We're allowed to do... Uh, the 85% trick, so we shall. That'll bring it down to 1275. It's a good deal for him. Bergman doesn't want to re sign, so he's gone, unfortunately. And hopefully, I just realized I might have just accidentally burned a year of Gleboff's ELC. <laughs> that would suck, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, Sean Dersey, I want to bring back two year deal for him, would be perfect. Luke Shen can obviously go, I'm not going to accidentally sign Patrick, and then I have to find out what I want to do with Morena. And then Clifford is going to go. Rem Paul is probably going to go. And left wings, Ferk, Patan, Sodergrant. Sodergrant can come back. Might as well see how good he is. We'll give him an extra year's worth of development. And everybody else here can go. AC Mott might sign. But for the most part, we don't have any big contracts to work with. We're already being listed as hopefuls. So let's see what's up. Jersey signs, Soda Grand signs, Anderson signs. And we did not hear back from Gleboff yet, did we? Okay, so it didn't go through anyway. That's perfect. So let's sign Gleboff here to his ELC. I am going to have to get rid of a defense or of a defenseman of a goaltender here though. That's the issue. He can't sign. I have to get rid of a goalie. That's a pretty bad oversight on my part. I meant to get rid of Bednard. <sighs> Damn. I might have to buy out Bednard because I can't trade him right now. That's rough. That's a rough oversight. Oh, damn. Yeah, you can't trade players right now. Okay. Well, that's a pretty bad mistake that I really wish I caught. Because I do believe you're still only allowed to have six goalies signed. So Bednard is the guy to cut, if that is indeed the case. For defenseman, again, Bergman does not want to re-sign. So he'll be let go. Luke Shen is obviously going to be let go of. We'll sign Ned Patrick to his ELC. And then with Norena, we have no idea how good this guy is. I'm going to sign him just for the hell of it. Ooh, he's only asking for 800k. We're going to let him go. He was just kind of a tack on with the trade. But unfortunately, you know, I think Ottawa just kind of sent us a guy. Uh, we're going to drop him. Wingers, Kyle Clifford, you're going to go. The penalty minutes were way too much. Uh, Rem Paul is also going to be dropped. Lang is going to be dropped. Because I can bring in whoever, like any veteran to help fill out the team. Uh, Ferk is going to go, Patan is going to go, Shafagunin will need to sign his ELC. Latipov is going to sign his ELC. Maybe I should have signed that guy because Latipov wasn't looking for that much either. Oh well, uh, Roloff isn't great, he's gone. And then for centers, David Kampf obviously gone, Carter Verhage is going to go. I am going to cut A. Simon. Ah, he's an RFA. We'll sign him for one more year. That's fine. Curtis Lazar can go. Let's sign Tyler Madden. And we'll sign Nick Wong for the hell of it, too. Not the best potential in the world. But why not? So let's sim forward today. See what we got. AC Mont signs. Wong signs. Shafa Gulin. Madden. Gleboff can't sign with me right now. Latipoff and Patrick. So the only move to make is to go to goaltenders and tell Bednard to kick rocks. I mean, it's a very cheap buyout. So, there we go. Bednard is gone. 
That opens up room to sign Gleboff. And that does it for the resign phase. Perfect. So, just a, a pretty brutal mistake on my part, but thankfully we had the buyout option there. Right now, in terms of buyout penalties, you know, 2 million bucks, 2.1 retained salary over 500k, but that is the uh, only bit of retained salary that we have, thankfully. So, let's sim ahead to free agency. I don't think I had to re-sign any staff members. So, we are good to go. So let's take a look at who's out here. Again, there is a decent shot of somebody half-decent being available. And that shot just went up in smoke, for the most part. So goalie-wise, you have Markstrom, Kemper, Murray, Blackwood, Carter Hart as an RFA. Whoo, a Carter Hart as an RFA. That is intriguing. And he is not looking for much. A first, I mean, we have to. We have to go for Carter Hart. A first and a third to steal Carter Hart away from Philadelphia? That's not even a question. And then out of the, you know, out of the prospects that are here, right? Like Lindholm at 19. I mean, the fact he's looking for a max contract, that's promising. But... I don't know. Like that's tough to say. Tough to say if that's worth it necessarily. <sighs> I mean, if we don't get Carter Hart, Lindholm's the guy to go after. But Carter Hart's there, and again, it's a first and a third. I think we have to go for him. How much is Mackenzie? Mackenzie Blackwood's looking for more than Carter Hart. I'm going for it. Like normally, that's the type of decision I'd be like, "Hey, what do you guys think?" I mean, if Carter Hart's available, you go after Carter Hart. We have $37 million in cap space, though, with very few open contract spots. But Carter Hart's definitely the guy to go for. And then for defensemen, good God. So, I mean, Nicoletti's there. Colin Miller could bring him back. But Colton Pareko's out there. Only Mata, Travis Dermott as an RFA. Let me double-check UFAs only. Ian Cole, Giordano. I mean, there's quite a few defensive options. And then obviously, like, okay, are there any prospects? There are two players looking for a max ELC, which is normally a good sign. It's Dominic Salak and Terrell Hillis, neither of whom were drafted. So decent shot. One of those two guys are solid if we weren't able to get uh, one of the top defensemen. The argument is do we need one of these top defensemen? I mean, it's a debatable point, but you look at Colton Pareko. I mean, he wants six years, though. And then forward-wise, Kadri, Domi, Dezingle, Farabee as an RFA, <laughs> which is insane. But again, I think Carter Hart, Carter Hart's the guy to get for RFAs. Andre Kasha's a UFA. Schwartz, of course, is out there. Claude Giroux, Gallagher, Halla Hoffman. I mean, there's Tyler Toffoli. <laughs> there's a lot of options. So if we look... At our team right now, right? Again, we're allowed to sign one big forward, one big defenseman, one big goaltender. The options are out there. To sign Carter Hart, we have to get rid of somebody, which is easy enough. Ingham can easily be traded. That's not a big deal. But, you know, we sign Carter Hart, get rid of a goalie now to go out and try to sign Carter Hart. We sign Carter Hart, we trade Robin Leonard easy enough defensively I mean we have Doughty, Clegg, Bjorn Fott, Walker, Zekoff, Anderson Roy and Dursey like we really don't have space because we're still trying to get the likes of Clegg, Bjorn Fott, Zekoff to develop so as much as I want to go out and get like one of those top four defensemen I really don't think we have the space for them I really don't. It's just, it's not looking all that promising for us. And then as it is, uh, with Marsh, he's listed as a depth defenseman, so he's going to be a high 70 overall. So, I mean, he could even be NHL ready by the start of next season. I think we probably just go for a prospect for our big player because, again, I know it makes the defense worse for now, but we're still trying to develop players. Forward-wise... In terms of a big-time forward, I mean, who do you take out, though? 
Like you look at the values. So Turcotte, Genther, Kopitar, Kapari, Iafalo, Grundstrom, Anderson, Dolan, Lazat, Velarde, and then Kaliev on the fourth line, Moore, Thomas, Van Kadishin's on the way up, but then you have Matt Luff, Fogamo, Tyler Madden. There just isn't any space for anybody else. Not until we see how these players have developed. So maybe I will leave it up to you. Let let me know what you think. I mean, you know, giving up a first and a third to go out and get a top RFA, that's not a bad bit of business if we can make it happen. There are prospects out there that we could fall back on if we need to. But with Dylan Genther probably joining the team this year, I expect him to be that much closer to an 80. What do we look to do? And then again, if we look at our draft picks this year, I mean, we do have that extra third now, thanks to Ottawa. I do have to move a goaltender. I'm going to go look at the... uh, at the trade finder here. And again, there might still be a bit of controversy over me manually getting that Bruins deal done. I'm not sure. Time will tell on that. But with these goaltenders, I mean, again, Ingham is just the odd man out. Is there anything out there for him? No. So if we wanted to make a play for Carter Hart, essentially I have to be allowed to trade Ingham. Could even try to trade Vevelinen. Could trade Vevelinen for two sevenths if we want that rule of like, hey, you can only make trades to the trade finder. That trade up for the third is the last one you can make without using the trade finder, uh, which is fine. You know, move a goalie, try to get Carter Hart. Defenseman, we could sign someone like Colton Pareko. Obviously, it would make the defense better short term, but long term, I mean, it's tough to say. Like I said, Dowdy Clay, Bjorn Fault Walker, Zekoff, Anderson, and then Dursey. Roy is obviously still a factor. You know, at the very least, he's going to be a depth defenseman here for a long time. It's just, do we want to take a spot away from one of our younger players? And then forward-wise, it would be the same thing. Do we want to take a spot away from one of our younger players? And I don't think we'd want to do that. So let me know what you think in the comments. Again, forward-wise, I don't really see anybody there who we absolutely have to get. I mean, no doubt there's some good talents. I mean, whether or not it is Domi. And again, we could look at stats. I know RFA-wise, Farabee would be a hell of a pickup as opposed to Carter Hart. He's also looking for a longer deal. And then defensemen. I mean, again, Colin Miller, Colton Pareko. Uh, even Marcus Nerdivara, someone who's a little bit younger, Oli Mata, they're out there. Travis Dermott as an RFA. And on goalie-wise, just the big question is, do we go after Carter Hart? And I feel like we it's probably going to be the popular opinion. But you know what? Just because there are so many different questions over how we want to balance this roster, who takes what spot and when, we're going to stop this episode here. That way you guys can voice your opinion and let me know what you think. And in the next episode, we'll finish up this offseason and get the next season going. Guaranteed to be a promising one due to the amount of young talent that we already have. And like I said, let me know what you think of the the move at the draft to get rid of Jaden Schwartz. Which again, perfectly perfectly allowed to, but should we have re-signed him? And the whole trading up for the third overall pick thing. Right move, wrong move, cheap, not cheap. Let me know what you think. Regardless, though, I hope you enjoyed the episode. You know the deal. Support the video. Support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. Check out everything in the description as well if you have not already done so. And, of course, a shout-out to my patrons over on Patreon. I love each and every one of you. I will see you all in the next one. Till then, have a good one. Take it easy. Goodbye.